Yeah, and I think it ties into the fundamental nature of services versus goods and materials. As you say, if you're buying raw materials, it's very binary. It, it, it is a thing. Um, you know, is it the right weight? Is it the right quantity? You know, is it the right quality? Um, but obviously, you can have a huge amount of complexity around the supply chain in that area, which is which is an area that I feel technology has solved pretty well in terms of ERP and e-sourcing tools, even, even tying in with the data analytics. Um, with services, I always kind of consider it to be almost the opposite in the sense that there's generally a much simpler supply chain involved in the delivery of the service, um, but the service itself is much more difficult to define. It can be quite vague, it can be quite intangible in some cases. And if you're looking at project-based activity, consulting, professional services, that sort of thing, um, again, it's, not, it's, it's something that can be very difficult to catalog, very difficult to define because every project might be different. Um, and I think it, it ties into the, the next kind of question I was going to ask you, which was which was about how how organizations can go about measuring cost and value and ultimately performance in services. This is this is the kind of key area that that we're addressing um, in the market as it, from a technology point of view is how do you actually take that whole process and extract the value out of it? Yes, you're, you're not going to be able to extract the value from um, your ERP system or your source to pay system because generally it's going to, you might be able to capture, for example, a source to contract type of journey. And that con contract may well be a PDF that again sits in a contract repository somewhere. But then does it capture real deliverables? Does it capture milestones? You know, and then you get into the delivery of that work. And that's where it can really get away from people in the sense that have those things change. Uh, have there been have there been additional milestones added? Have milestones been been delayed? Have they been changed as the project goes through its different phases? Um, and in terms of performance, it's not just about the quantitative information around you know what milestones were there or or what deliverables were there, whether they're blocks of consulting time or their or their sprints in an agile development process or whatever they might be or KPIs in an ongoing service. Um, it's not just the quantitative on time on budget. Um, you know to uh to, to scope it's the qualitative aspect of it of are they doing a good job what's your overall satisfaction level because a project a, a consulting firm could be doing a piece of work and it could look like they've got a significant cost overrun or a time overrun but actually it might be the problem of the internal stakeholders the project might have turned out to be much bigger than they originally thought it was going to be so all these things can be can be brought into a, an area where they do become useful data um, what, what's your what's your view on on how organisations can kind of move towards making uh, kind of real comparisons between suppliers and actual uh, gaining a better understanding of the value of the services that they're buying? I'll try my best because I don't <laughs> it's a have a big question. The, yeah, I don't have all the answers yet, so, but I can point out some of the problems that I've seen from my execution uh, level. Let's start with, with the number one, which is the master data management, right? Most of the organization will not have a unique service code. They would rather have one generic code of services where they will have a free text to begin with. And, and I'm not blaming them because there could be many different services. Uh, so how to define or categorize them properly so that the comparison at least becomes apple to apple. Uh, that's the start of the problem. So if you club all the services under one generic material called, called services, your spend analytics goes out of the window, right? That's that's from where the problem starts. So from there, let's move to the buyer side as a category manager. So when someone would send me a request to procure services, um, I will try to draw out how much I have paid historically on that, right? And that's my problem statement to start with. I would look into the quotation that the supplier might have provided for that particular service. And I would then screen my e-sourcing system to see, can I get some like-to-like -like comparisons? And if my e-sourcing system doesn't have the information in right granular detail, like line items resource-wise, which I guess I have never seen. I have only seen people putting PDFs into the play. So whole comparison of how much have I paid previously becomes a really uh, cumbersome exercise. So availability of the right like to like comparison data becomes a really good opportunity. How we are solving it today, because we try to divide it in terms of two aspects. One, uh, the quantities. So for example, if it is a man day uh, uh, sort of a project, time and money, 
I would see in terms of how many days are required, right? And the second, which I guess is more important, is in terms of the unitary prices. Now, ideally, my e-sourcing system should allow me to capture the unit prices of all my services in a very structured form, but that doesn't happen. Most of the tools uh, either don't offer this functionality or most of the buyers won't use it according to that because it's very cumbersome to invite quotations in that manner. So from buyer's perspective, if we can get them an access to the unitary prices of the similar service procured historically, that will be a huge win because it offers me straight up like to like comparisons aspect. Moving on to the third aspect in terms of how the service is being received is again a very big area of improvement because there are two kinds of organization that I have seen. One, who would stop the purchase if the service scope is increasing, right? And that's usually I've seen in small setups where the buyers and the requesters are very tightly connected, right? So they would immediately phone up uh, the buyer, I did a mistake, the scope has increased or the supplier did a mistake, the scope has increased, can you negotiate, et cetera, et cetera. However, in big organization, the gap or the uh, communication gap between the buyers and the requester is quite big. And that's where you would see all the revisions in scope not reaching up to the buyer's desk. And that's where uh, many service providers come in uh, really competitive to begin with, and then later they would ask for 20% scope increment, not the price increment, scope improvement, so that they are again moved to a higher bracket at the end of the day. And because this feedback loop is either delayed or doesn't ex exist, the buyers won't be able to see that. And another operational aspect is if there is a scope overrun, like you put it, or a scope increment, you will never be able to see on the e-sourcing system. You can only see that in spend analytics or their ERP system, right? And then, then for buyer, uh, someone would have to do either both the analysis together, right? E-sourcing system analysis and spend analysis to really understand the full picture, which normally doesn't happen because of the other priorities. So this is where procurement excellence team comes into the play. So we would always recommend to our advanced center have a dashboard or monitoring mechanisms for cost overruns in services specifically using the, let's say, some of the algorithms and scripts running on the your ERP system. So whenever you see a new scope amendment being issued, just put that which supplier, which period, et cetera, et cetera. It's still not very effective because of the material code generalization and pure description generalization. But yes, I think uh, monitoring the cost overruns in services, again, a very big opportunity, which often gets missed. 